Amen. So once again, I want to just welcome all of you to this session, right? Uh, we're talking about the end time church, right? Uh, last week was the first part. Today is the concluding part. Okay, it's uh, uh, the end time church is a very extensive study, but I don't want to drag you through the various series, so I kind of encapsulated the two teachings, you know, the five, six teachings into two sessions so that you can begin to understand. See, most of all, our goal here is to recognize what God is doing. Amen? Because, you know, we are so consumed with so many things that are going on with our life, sometimes we miss out on what God is doing. Or, in a different way to put it, what is the bigger picture? Okay? What is the bigger picture of things that are going on right as far as end times are concerned right i believe that we are in the end times okay we are coming very quickly to the end of times so it's very important for us to understand what god is doing amen so let's go ahead and look at the first scripture right the first scripture here daniel 7 21 it says i was watching and the same horn was making war against the saints and prevailing against them until the Ancient of Days came and a judgment was made in favor of the saints of the Most High. And the time came for the saints to possess the kingdom. Hallelujah. So this is talking about end times. That there's going to come a time where the church is going to be fighting. Okay? There's going to be a battle between the church okay? and, and the false prophet right and the antichrist of the end times right it says that the horn here is talking about the antichrist so there is going to be a war and the antichrist is actually going to prevail okay it looks like he's going to win right sometimes you know last year we thought you know sickness was going to win so there are times we come to those kind of places where it seems like the devil is going to win but then the bible says you know that the god of heaven pushed him back and what did he do he gave the saints the ability to possess the kingdom right in the last days in the last days the, the church of jesus christ will see a sweeping revival there's a sweeping move of god coming on this end time church like we have never seen before Right? And there's another scripture in the New Testament, Romans 8, 19. We are very familiar with the scripture. It says, for the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. Right? Creation is waiting for the manifestation. Okay? Not for the sons of God to disappear, not to be raptured, but the manifestation. That means the sons of God come to a place where they they will be in charge amen they will be part of a season of a great move of god so we are coming into that season of a sweeping mighty revival right so we need to be aware of that okay and i believe i believe we will see that happen okay probably you know in, in this next season, you know, uh, there are many predictions, but I don't like numbers. But as you see the events coming together, you know, we are very close. We are at the verge of a cashless society globally, right? We, we are seeing, right, the whole monetary system of the world about to change in a very drastic way, okay? Um, <clears throat> you know, and we, we are seeing you know the the rise of socialism around the world you know the strength that you know communism is gaining around the world is unbelievable but these are signs of the end times there are many more that i won't get into but my goal is to prepare us as a church how are we ready for this end time amen so let's look at <clears throat> let's go on here right the presence of god is separated into three you can see right the people at the outer court those are the ones that are saved and then the people that are in the holy place are the ones that are involved in the word, prayer, worship. These are the, you know, the servants, right? The priests that minister in the midst of them, right? In these arenas. But the ones that enter the holy of holies, right? Who encounter the glory, 
which is what we call sonship, right? Most Christians stay at salvation. Come on, let's be real. Every Sunday, come back just going through the motion of forgiveness. They just stay at salvation, right? And then some Christians progress to the point, you know, <clears throat> of the priestly ministry or a servanthood ministry where they spend more time in prayer, spend more time in the Word, and spend more time in worship, right? But then, where God wants us to get to is to the Holy of Holies. You see, there's a remnant, there's a small group of people who understand what sonship is, right? See, we must prepare to be aligned with the coming glory. You know, sometimes, you know, I believe that we as Christians are similar to the world. In a sense, we have a lot of wishes, but we are not practical. You know, someone may say, you know, I, I, I want to be a multi-millionaire. That's a good desire. But you know, just wishing will not happen. <clears throat> One thing also cannot make it happen, right? <clears throat> you have to do something in order to achieve <clears throat> that financial goal in your life, right? Similarly, right, the glory of God will not just come on those that are saved, right? Why? Because half of them, maybe not even interested in coming to church. They come once in a while. Right? And then the glory of God, right? Are not just, it's not just coming to those people, you know, that are serving, right? Because they, it, we, we are not sure where they are at in their Christian walk. But the glory of God, for sure we know, is coming on the sons, on sonship. Okay? That's where the glory is coming. So my question to us today is where are we at? Are we saved Christians? Are we serving Christians? Are, are we Christians that are walking in sonship? <clears throat> okay, let's go on. I'll explain even further. Okay, let's look a little bit even deeper. You know, when people talk about, you know, people ask me, what is the most, what is the thing that Jesus talked about the most? Okay, in his preaching, in his three and a half years of preaching, the number one subject Jesus talked about was God. 376 times. Number two subject Jesus talked about is the kingdom of heaven. 273 times. Okay, when's the last time you heard a message on the kingdom of heaven? Okay, when's the last time you heard a message on God? Right? Okay, or oh, number three, <clears throat> 172 times Jesus talked about hell. Okay, when is the last time you heard a message on hell in church? Okay, I never heard one. Okay, period. I used to hear it in the 80s. Okay? When some fire brimstone preacher would come and talk about hell. Never heard about hell. That was Jesus' third subject. Look at the subject called worry, which you always hear in church. Right? Don't worry, don't worry. 17 times mentioned in the Bible. Right? See, Jesus is our pattern. What Jesus emphasized, we must emphasize. What Jesus never emphasized, we must not emphasize. Today, you know, you go to a lot of churches, they talk about social issues. A lot of the messages are focused on people, not on God. Okay? You focus on people, okay? it not necessarily helps them to connect with God. You have to focus on God so that they understand how to reach God. Because God is the solution. People are not the solution. People will always have problems. People will always have challenges. But when you introduce God to them, they will find their solution in the person of God. Right? So when we preach, when we teach, we should be like Jesus. Amen? Talk about God. Talk about the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Make it more exciting. Talk about hell. Right? Hallelujah. Right? What did, okay, what Jesus did on the cross represented, we looked at this last week, okay, the sacrificial goat. Remember there were two goats on the day of atonement. What he did on the cross represented the goat that was slaughtered when the blood was brought into the holy of holies. Okay? That was the sacrificial goat. What Jesus did from the time he was born till the time he was sacrificed represent what? The scapegoat. Remember? That goat was let free. Why was this so significant? Because this was so significant, number one, because it was the most important feast in the Jewish calendar. Number two, also, during this feast, the high priest once a year enters the most holy place. That's why this is important. The most holy place on planet Earth, the high priest enters once a year. Why is this important? Because God's desire is that you and I 
will enter the most holy place. Right? Remember this. God's desire is not that you and I will be famous. Okay? God's desire is not that you and I will become wealthy. No. Remember the Bible says all those things will be added to you. But God's desire is so that you can encounter Him. Amen. Encounter His glory. That's why this was very significant. Right? So Jesus, when He came, what did He do? He did two things. He took us into the Holy of Holies. He was the only Son that went into the Holy of Holies. And He was the only Son that came out of the Holy of Holies and walked and lived free from sin. He lived in the midst of sin, but free from sin. See, so that's our model. Our model is on one hand, we walk into the Holy of Holies and live in the Holy of Holies. Number two, we live among the world, but we are not part of the world. The world system cannot contaminate us. We are in the world, but not of the world. This is the goal. This is the simplified goal of being a Christian. Okay? Being a Christian got nothing to do with the things of the world. Nothing. It's got to do with you preparing yourself to, for the kingdom of heaven and for you being a witness in the kingdom of this world. That's all. Right? Nothing else. Okay? So let's go on. The good that dies brings you into the Holy of Holies. The goat that is released brings freedom into your life so that you are set free from the bondage of sin, from the control of sin. Right? Let's look at it in another angle. God's good for us. Revelation 5 1 says it this way He made us kings and priests unto God, and we shall reign on the earth. What's God's goal? We are priests. We are king. Get that again. Okay? As a priest, we enter into the holiest place to face to face with God. As a priest. Right? As a king, we execute God's dominion and authority on the earth. That's what Jesus told his disciples. Go all over the Matthew 28, 19. Right? I give you all authority in heaven and on earth. The authority was not given to sit around, do nothing. The authority was rulership, kingship. Amen? So our relationship is what? Vertical and horizontal. Hallelujah. Like the shape of the shape of the cross. Vertical, horizontal. Touching God. Touching people. Hallelujah. So God in the essence of holiness. Right? God is the essence of holiness. That's why... Without holiness, you cannot encounter God. Anything associated with God becomes holy. You come into contact, you become holy. Why? Because His nature will be imputed, imparted into you. Without holiness, one cannot see God or know God. You see, that is why we are called into the Holy of Holies. Outer God relationship, not essential. Holy place. Right? Some people get so fascinated because they are good worshippers. And then there are those that get so fascinated because they think in their head they are great preachers. It's nothing. Right? Holiness is not just works. Right? The fascination is that I can get to the innermost place and be with the Creator God. Be with Abba Father. Amen? Jesus became sin. Thus we became what? The righteousness of God. What was righteousness? It was a gift. Nothing you could attain, but He would give it to you as a gift. It, was, it is imparted to us. But remember this, what I said last week. Righteousness and holiness is different. Righteousness is a gift. You can be righteous, but yet not holy. Why? Because holiness means God owns you. Right? For example, you know, like tithing. Right? What does the Bible say about tithing? God owns the time. Right? We, listen, it, it doesn't say that we give the time because we don't own it. We bring.
bring the tithe. That's what the Bible says. Bring your tithe to the storehouse of the Lord. Why? It is His. You bring it. Okay, in the Old Testament, you know what they did? They had ten sheep, ten goats, they will count. One, two, three. When they reach number ten, they belong to God. You say that's God's. That's not theirs, that was God's. They belong to God. So holiness means what? God owns it, right? Continue to interact, right? Continue to state some of your points, right? So holiness brings what? Harmony to everything. This is so powerful. That means when I come to the place of holiness and I'm in harmony with God, listen, I'm in harmony with everything. Look at this. Jesus never feared. <laughs> Jesus was never puzzled. Jesus never struggled, right? You know, maybe except you know while he was going to the cross because he faced humanity. But through his life, you see that one. What do you see? Jesus was in harmony with God. Even at twelve years old, his parents were friendly looking for him. He was in harmony with God. Why? Because holiness brings you in harmony with God. When you are in harmony with God, you are in harmony with everything else. Okay? You are not fearful, you are not afraid, you are not concerned. Right? We also looked at this number 17. Okay? 17 verse 8. Now it came to pass on the next day that Moses went into the tabernacle and Aaron's rod budded. Remember we talked about this last week. In the presence of the Lord, time stops. Isn't that astounding? Time actually stops in God's presence. If you continue to remain in the presence of the Lord, okay, your the, the cells in your body can be restored, can be revived. The presence of God changes you and I. It changes us. That's why the, a dead rod, what happened? It had leaves, flower, and fruit. What happened? It went back to its original. It went back to its original. Death was removed. Life came back. Why? Because God's presence. When you are in God's presence, life comes on the inside of you. Life is poured on the inside of you. It comes from God's presence. Hallelujah, right? So we are called to dwell in the holy of holies. Okay, we looked at the scripture also. Okay, in Psalms 110, right? It says what? Your people will offer themselves willingly on the day, okay? Okay, on the day of encounter, from the warm of the morning, like dew of your youth will come to you. I remember what we talked about this. Okay, there's this. Uh, that, that, if the, it says that if God's people were to seek Him, what's dew of the morning? Early in the morning. If God's people were to seek Him early in the morning, what will happen? There will be a renewal of your youth. There will be a renewal of your strength early in the morning. That's what the Bible says. What? Meditate day and night. The more you receive the life of God, transformation takes place. Okay, this place is called the holiest place. You see, Isaiah, when he went in, what happened? He fell apart. He fell apart. Why? Because he couldn't handle it. See, that's why, what am I saying? In churches today, we are not encountering the Holy of Holies. No. Okay? We are mainly getting glimpses of a holy place. Glimpses. Shadows. But not the Holy of Holies. Why? Because in the Holy of Holies, there's a fullness of glory. Fullness of power. Fullness of manifestation. But guess what? Fullness of holiness. That's why the high priest's feet had to be tied. If they didn't hear the sound of the bell, he's dead. Pull him out. Pull him out. You cannot enter that place without holiness. Okay, very quickly. How to live inside the Holy of Holies? This is our lesson today. Because that's what God wants. God wants us to live in the Holy of holies, not holy place, definitely not out of God. <clears throat>
God's goal is to bring us into His very presence. Right? The Son brings you to salvation. Spirit brings you to sanctification. Right? And renewal. But the Father alone brings you to glory. Hallelujah. Right? We encounter a certain level of His presence, but not the fullness of His presence. Okay? Your surrender here will determine your proximity there. How much you die here okay, in your flesh will determine your access there. Amen? Right? In the Old Testament, they started from the outside and they went into the inside. Right? They couldn't go inside. But look at where Jesus started. Jesus didn't start from the outside. He started from the inside. Right? How do we know this? When he prayed, he said, Our Father. Where did he start? Inside. Not outside. He said, Our Father. Where did he start? Holy of Holies. In front of the Father. He said, This is how you can pray. Listen, if you are not there, how can you pray like that? So what is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying, I have paved the way so much so that you can start from the inside, not outside. Hallelujah. It's his invitation to you and I to have our relationship with the Father in the Holy of Holies. Right? Okay. So how does this process take place? Romans 8 1 says, Therefore, now there is no condemnation to those who walk in Christ Jesus, okay, who do not walk according to the flesh, but the Spirit. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ has made me free. Listen, the more I receive the impartation of God's life, the more I am free from sin. Okay? The life of God makes me, brings rather, freedom from sin. If somebody is still struggling and not getting a breakthrough in God, is you know why? Very simple. Not enough proportion of the life of God. Because if the life of God, it's called the Zoe life, if the life of God increases in proportion you know what will happen? There will be a resistance to sin. There will be a distastefulness to sin. There will be a hatred to sin. It will be very difficult for you to do anything bad, to say anything. Very difficult even to gossip. Very difficult even to think bad things. Very difficult to say anything bad or to have bad feelings or bad emotions very difficult why because when the life of god is on the inside of you you cannot operate that way i remember a man who had been to heaven and came back you know and he said this he said when people gossip when people bang by when people you know do all the human fleshly things he said i want to run and hide because i cannot take it because i've been in god's presence when I was brought back to life, I went into God's presence. So now when I came back, I cannot handle that. I cannot handle this human, human situations. It, it, it bothers me, this human situation. Isn't that amazing? Right? So he said, so the life of God is given in what? Measures. Measures. We can't handle fullness. Faith is given in measures, right? Right? Little faith, mustard seed faith, great faith. Anointing is also in measure. Elijah had certain Elisha had double, Jesus had spirit without measure. Without measure. So it's given in what? Proportion, the life of God. So 1 John 3, 9 says, Whoever has been born of God does not sin. That's what it says. Why? Because the seed remains in him and he cannot sin. So when the life of God comes on the inside of you, what does it come as? It comes as a seed. As it grows, what does it do? It prevents sin from coming on the inside of you. Okay? If sin is still coming right now, guess what? Still sin. Haven't grow. But this is where you and I need to nurture this. 
Because if we don't nurture this, then there's no holy of holies. See, we must nurture. So that as we nurture this on the inside of us, there will be a resistance in our mind, in our emotions, in our will towards sin. Whoever that is born of God does not sin. So it's scripture saying, scripture is coming in line, right? Because he has been born of God. So he comes in a seed form. First he comes in a seed. Look at this, Ephesians 3, 14. Paul is writing to the church. 16, he says, he would grant you according to the riches of glory to be strengthened through the spirit in the inner man. Then verse 17, he says, that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. These are Christians. Okay, if you look at your Bible, where this passage was written, it was Acts 20. Acts 20, Paul was seeing miracles. Okay, verse 11, through handkerchiefs. Ephesus was a, quite an incredible church. But yet he is saying, okay, Christ must dwell. Not this. See, first seed form. Only seed. But now, Christ must come and remain. It's a growth from seed form now to dwelling form. See, so holiness comes what? Seed form. How you surrender, how you respond to it, and how you change yourself, not anyone else. Anyone else is not your business. Yourself is your business. I mean, imagine, you know, your busy body, where everyone else, they all go to heaven and you don't. What's that thing? Right? That's not your business. Your business is you. Because you have two eyes to look at yourself. Right? Examine your heart. You know. You know the corruptions in your own heart. I know the corruptions in my own heart. I know the struggles in my own heart. Man, so second, from seed, he becomes dwelling. And then number three, we say this. John 14, okay, verse 21. He who keeps my commands keeps them. He who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Notice, seek form, dwelling form, manifest form. Right? Salvation, service, sonship. See the sequence, the progression God wants to take. Seek form, holiness, dwelling form of holiness. And last one, glory form of holiness this last day's church is going to be taken to the glory form of holiness hallelujah see we cannot go there many are going to miss it i'm telling you many are going to miss it okay why god can take you to a place you don't want to go he can save you but your position in heaven, your place in heaven is decided by you. God can't decide that one. Right? He can. Can you decide? Hallelujah. Let's go on quickly. Romans 6.22 says that. So how do you get to this place? Okay? He says, put away your former life. Right? And clothe yourself with newness. Okay? Clothe yourself with newness. Colossians 3 10 says again, put on, clothe yourself. To be renewed, okay, put on this new garment, right? How do you do it? Okay, he shows us one thing. Renew in the spirit of your mind. So where does the change come in order for us to progress? When the seed comes, where must the change come? You see, the change must come in our mind, right? Why? Because that's where the battle is. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 14 says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in the pulling down of strongholds. Okay? You allow it, you, you put it off, you put on. Right? You allow, you stop. See the frame, the structure of acceptance and resistance is decided by you. Okay? You cannot say, Oh, God did not make me holy. God did not make you righteous. Jesus already paid the price. Jesus already paved the way. Jesus already set things into motion. Our job now 
is to come into alignment with what Jesus did. See that? Right? So here it says all warfare is fought in the mind. When you walk, right? When you walk into a stronghold, either you affect it or it affects you. Okay? So if you carry a greater degree of God's presence, that environment gets affected. The demons run. Right? But if you go into that environment weak, you run. <laughs> the devil's still there. Nothing changes. Nothing changes. See that? So by that proportion that is inside of you, either you push back darkness or darkness pushes you. Right? So when you come out worried, disappointed, fearful, what happens? They affect you. A healthy mind stops an attack. You stop it or it attacks you. Right? A lot of people are struggling with these nowadays. Right? Jesus, Jesus could understand what was in the mind. Look at this. Luke, I won't go through all the scriptures, but you can write them down. Luke 5 22. Jesus perceived. Right? Luke 6 7. Right? Jesus knew. What they were thinking. He knew what they were thinking. Okay? Verse 8, he says, even he knew what they were thinking. Luke 9, 46. Okay? And the argument arose. Jesus was aware of their inner thoughts. Right? When you walk close to the Holy of Holies, your lifestyle will be aware of your atmosphere. You will know. You know why sometimes we get caught off guard by Satan's attack and before we know it is too late? Why? We become depressed, we become discouraged, we become disappointed. You know why? Because we are not living in the Holy of Holies. We are living in, okay? Maybe the Holy Place, okay? But mostly the outer court. Because we live so much in the outer court, we swing in and out. Swing in and out. So what happens to our lifestyle, our atmosphere, our atmosphere, it's penetrable. The enemy can penetrate anytime, it's just whether he wants to do it. See, but when we walk in the holy of holies, it's impenetrable, right? They try to trick Jesus, they try to deceive Jesus, they try to sway Jesus, could not be swayed. Why? Because he knew, he perceived their mind. He knew their thoughts. He knew what they were trying to get to. He understood the atmosphere. So if you were close to the Holy of Holies, guess what? You will understand the atmosphere. Let's go very quickly right now. Your thoughts can be classified into three categories. Okay? What do we think of often? Thoughts about our life. My future. What am I going to do? Right? We're always thinking about my job, my salary, my house, my food, right? One festival to another festival. Second thought, emotion and soul, right? Emotion and soul, always thinking emotionally, right? Happy when you hear good news, sad when you hear bad news. Everything external decides internal. Internal don't decide external, right? Yo, yo, even Christian the same, yo, yo. Right? One day so happy, next day so depressed. It's, it's human nature. Thirdly, our category of our thoughts, sometimes we think about God, but most of the time we think about self. Okay, nothing wrong with it, but what am I trying to say? We have to find a balance. If you are constantly only thinking about yourself, only constantly thinking about your life, only constantly thinking about your emotion, then the devil has a great stronghold over your life. Right? Why? Because in your thinking process, you should be thinking about the goodness of God. Thinking about the love of God, the favor of God, the blessing of God. The Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. Whatever you think is what you receive. Okay, the, the several Greek words for mind, but this one, okay, for Leo, is the emotion, the human nature, const 
the affections are set in one direction. Okay? Mentally disposed in a certain direction. This is how our tendency is. And this is why, you know, we are always overwhelmed. You see, that's why we must learn how can we battle, how can we change this and remain, learn to remain in the Holy of Holies. Because God wants us to remain in the Holy of Holies. You see, when you can remain in the Holy of Holies, you're free. When you remain in the Holy of Holies, those burdens, those troubles, guess what? They come and you just brush them off. They can't touch you. Okay? I'm going to show you a pattern of how you can remain in the Holy of Holies. We see the secret okay, in the picture of the high priest. Very interesting. Why? Because remember, the high priest is the one that goes into the Holy of Holies. Right? Not the other priest, not the people, but the high priest. So the high priest is the one that enters the Holy of Holies. Very interesting, right? Look at the high priest here, right? He goes into the Holy of Holies, right? There are three layers of garments that he has. First is what we call the linen, the white layer. Second is the blue layer, the heavenly layer. And third is the golden layer with the ephod. The 12 stones over his chest. Okay, very interesting. Okay, because these three layers, I want to break it down of how we should process our mind and allow our mind to be in such a way that if we maintain our mind in these three categories, we can enter the Holy of Holies. Okay, let's go very quickly. Right? The layers of the mind, the white linen here speaks of a sound mind. Second Timothy 1 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. Okay? The root of all, okay, of a sick mind is fear. Okay? Fear makes you sick mentally. A fearful mind is a sick mind. When you fear, that's a sick mind. Okay? That is not a sound mind. Okay? Each time you worry, you step out of the spirit and you are in the flesh. Okay? And this is what you do on top of that. You expose yourself and you become vulnerable for the enemy's attack. Okay? So you have to keep your mind, guess what? On the love of God. How do you keep that? You keep it there with thanksgiving. Okay, I'll go deeper later. But number one is what? A sound mind. Your mind has to be sound. Okay? Sound mind. That means a mind that, you know what? That is so comforted and it knows that, you know what? God will take care of it. My father will take care of it. I will be fine. I will not give myself to fear. I will not give myself to worry. Okay? Number two. Okay, a mind of humility, the blue layer. This is so important. Okay, Bible says, let this mind in you, which was in who? Christ Jesus. What did he do? He humbled himself. Though being in the form of God, he humbled himself. How do we enter in? How do we get into the Holy Holy? It's not by works. Remember that. Okay, you can fast till the cow come home. Okay, you can pray till Timbaktu. Okay, some people pray until they become religious spirit. Okay, shouldn't do that to you. Okay, what it should do to you is make you more humble. See, the more you get into God's presence, the more humble you become. Okay, the more unassuming you become. It's not self-confidence, it's a God confidence. Your confidence is not in your strength, it's in a God strength. Okay, there's no brownie point saying that, oh, I've done this, I've done this for so many years, so I should be okay. No. Okay, it's ongoing. Okay, yesterday's achievement cannot cover you today or tomorrow. Because today is a new day. Today is a new step. Colossians 3, 12 says what? Okay, put on, it says several things, but the key one, it says here, humility. Interesting in the Greek here, 
The word humility is humility of mind. Mind. Acts 20 verse 18, and all Paul says, I serve in humility and tears. Think about that. Right? There were many plots against the Apostle Paul. Okay? He served in humility. Remember, he was a religious zealot. He was a religious fanatic. But yet, he walked in humility before God. He knew humility was such a key to be in the Holy of Holies. Okay? Right? You want to know how humble you are? Right? Watch. When people attack you, <laughs> when somebody says something about you, if you have a reaction immediately, that's not humility. That's flesh. That's a weakness. Right? Remember all the things they said about Jesus? Didn't bother him. Said all kinds of things. They said, you are a son of the devil. Jesus said, chill. <laughs> said, Satan cannot, cannot be against himself. Right? He called Paul all kinds of things. Nothing happened. Why? Because he walked in humility. He was a dead man. Dead man with no reaction. Right? Some people, oh, pastor say something, don't come to church for one week. Okay? I don't know what those people are saying. Why? Because not broken. Not broken. Not changed. You cannot encounter man. How can you encounter God? You cannot resolve here this issue. Okay? Within your own character. How you want to get closer to God. Number three is what? Spiritual mind. Spiritual mind. First was sound mind. Number two, okay, humble mind. Third, three. Third is spiritual mind. Romans 8, 6, 1 says the mind of the spirit. Exodus 28, verse 2. Powerful scripture. It says, even that holy garments, and the garments represented what? Glory and beauty. What is that? The third layer is what? Glory and beauty. The third layer takes you in. Look at that. The third layer also notice what? You have 12 tribes. You carry people's burden. No more about you. You, 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 you. No more. You carry the burden for people. You carry the burden for others. That's a sign of a mature Christian, mature Christian leader. That, you know, it's not about themselves. Why are they serving God? They're serving God because they want to serve others, serve people. Let's go deeper in this. Let's go to the first layer again, right? The white layer, the linen, okay? Worry, complaining, ungratefulness is the sickness of our mind. Okay, what should happen in this first layer? Layer. Right? Seek first the kingdom of heaven. All these things shall be added unto you. This is the first layer of your mind. The first layer okay, in the earth, but not of the earth. When you are first layer, you are here, but not here. You do everything with what? Gratefulness. You're grateful. You know, some people are not thankful. Okay? You should be grateful. Come on. To be very grateful, okay? Not in words, in action. Real gratefulness should be in action. Words is cheap, okay? Words is very cheap kind of gratefulness. Come on, right? Okay? Appreciate your parents with gratefulness. Not, oh, mom, you're a good dad. No. Do something to demonstrate you are grateful, right? Watch out for the people, okay? Watch out for the people. With frame of mind. And thanksgiving brings you, guess what? Right? He says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. You only come to the gate. <laughs> thanksgiving, only a gate. They <laughs> haven't gone in yet. Alright? We need to go in. Hallelujah. Okay, number two, the blue layer. Look at this. Okay? Humility of the mind. Sensitive to love. Sensitive to joy. Sensitive to peace. Right? What happens at this stage? Proverbs 4 says, guard your heart, okay, with all diligence, for out of it springs what? The issue of life. So what are you at this stage? You watch, okay, your love level, your joy level, your peace level. This is a second level, okay, 
of the holy place. Look at what the Bible says here about love. First Corinthians 13, 4. Love suffers what? Long. How long? Very long. Okay? Love is what? Kind. Love is not envious. If you truly have love, if someone wins, you celebrate. You're happy for someone's success. Right? It does not parade. Right? Just because you get something straight away from Facebook. Ah, Facebook, why your voucher Facebook? Okay, everything Facebook, don't parade. Okay, be humble. Okay, I'm giving testimony to God. No, you're giving testimony to yourself. God don't look at Facebook. Okay, God is not interested with Mark Zuckerberg. He's not interested with Twitter. Right? I'm giving glory to God. No, it's pride. Are you with me? Okay? You want to give glory to God? Go out on the street, go share testimony about what Jesus did. Not what you did. Hallelujah. That's testifying. Love doesn't what? Parade. Okay? How can say how lian? No how lian. Love doesn't parade. No sure. It's not puffed up. Okay? Not puffed up. Don't need to puff up. Right? Does not behave rudely. Does not speak. Okay? Seek its own. You know what Love does not seek its own. Okay? You're measured by what you give, not what you keep. Okay? It's not provoked. See? If somebody has love, cannot provoke. Only love. Okay? You're ugly. Okay, thank you. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay? Not bother. Not bother. Okay? You know? Right? There's so much racial tension today in our world. Right? Okay, I know it's unfair. Okay? It's not right. You know, you get picked. You know? Different places, different locations where you are, you get picked because of your race or whatever. Okay? But listen, if you have love, you're not provoked. Say what you want. I'm a person of the kingdom of God. I'm not bothered. Say what you want. Right? It's alright. Love bears what? All things. Keeps no record. Not long record. Okay? Every time angry, go back 1975. 1975. You know what you did. Right? Okay? Second stage, when you reach the second stage, you have no evil thoughts towards others. Okay? Why? Because you're heavenly minded. Remember the blue color. Heavenly minded. Okay? Priest walks with bells on his garment. On the blue level, he has these bells. Okay? What do these bells represent? Bells is a, okay, the sound of music. Music. Ephesians 5.19 says, Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, making melody in your heart. The second level, what is your resistance? Your, will, your resistance at the second level, right, is because now you are so conscious, okay, of heaven, okay? You are worshipping, you are singing, you are praising Heaven, you are so heavenly minded, earth doesn't affect you. It doesn't affect you. So at the second level, guess what? Okay, you are a joyful, peaceful worshiper. Worshiper, hallelujah, making melody in your heart. So as you make melody, what does it do? It provides a resistance resistance on the inside of you to stop Satan's attack and keep you in the atmosphere of heaven. Amen. God wants us to stay in the atmosphere. You see, we stay in this atmosphere of heaven and we progress in this atmosphere of heaven when the glory comes. It will know who you are. It will know who you are. Because it will recognize you. Because it will see third level. Rest, first level. Or no level. It will see. So it will see the potential for the third level is there. So the third level will come. Right? Glory to glory. Faith to faith. Grace to grace. Okay, last one. And I will conclude with this last one. Okay? The goal Okay? Layer. The spirit mind. The God consciousness. John 17, 22. And the glory which I have, I give to them. 
that they may be one as we are one. What is this third level? Third level was oneness. So one with God. Right? Moses was so one. You know, when he came down from Mount Sinai, he was so one with God. He didn't even know he had changed. They looked at him and they freaked out. They were like, wow, this guy looks like a white ghost. Huh? White ghost. <laughs> He's freaked out. But he's like, mm -hmm. what happened? Don't know. See, third level, you've got no more consciousness of yourself. It's okay. No big deal. No big deal. I've met people like that. I've met them. Underground church leaders. I've met men called Prem Pradhan. Great leader from Nepal. I've met awesome men of God. I've met leaders in India like that. Many, many years ago. Incredible men. Nothing bothers them because they walk so close with God. God and them are one. Have food, no food, no bother. Have money, no money, no bother. Have shelter, no shelter, no bother. No issue. Right? Why? Because they are living in the oneness of God. In the consciousness of only God. At this stage, the manifestation of the Spirit is in fullness. God's thoughts are your thoughts. God's feelings are your feelings. You know what God is thinking and God knows what you are thinking. So you think he answered. No need to worry. No need. No need to say anything out of your mind. You think, boom, you do. Why? Third level of glory. See this in another way, right? You will reflect at the third level 100% of the new covenant. Moses' glory was what? Passing glory. But this one, remain, stay. Priests go in, come out once a year. But this one will remain on you. When the church is perfected, it will function in unlimited capacity of supernatural power. Somebody asked me, what is the supernatural power that you're talking about? I'm telling you, okay? You close your eyes and you open, you'll be somewhere else. That kind of power. Right? You remember Elijah's servant? Right? He told the servant, when you were there taking the money from Gehazi, I was there. Wow. He was there. He was there. I was there. An unlimited, unraveled capacity of the glory of God like never seen before. Stage one, hand of God. Hand, take one, take the hand of God. Many Christians only at this stage, right? Second stage, heart of God, right? Where healing, emotion, you get strengthened, okay? Love gets strengthened, but that's not the goal. The goal is what? Third stage, face of God, face of God. When we go in front of the Father, face to face. My last scripture, concluding scripture, Ephesians 5, 26, 27, and 32. And that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she should be holy without blemish. When you walk at the third level, which is coming, you are presented to Christ. Not to anyone else, but to Christ. And Paul calls it a great mystery. No spot, no wrinkle, no blemish, but is holy. That's a move of God coming, church. A tremendous, awesome move of God is coming on you and I. But we cannot assume that we will be part of it. We cannot assume. So I've shown you the process. The progression of how you can get there, and many other scriptures, many other revelation, how you can get there. You and I must persevere, you and I must pursue till we get to that place. 
Because when we get to that place, we can say, in all humility, in all brokenness, we can say, Lord, come. Come, Lord. Clothe me in your presence. It's no longer about my, it's no longer I that live. I'm ready, Lord, with the two sickles to bring in the greatest harvest the world has ever seen. And once that's done, in the twinkle of an eye, bang, in the presence of my Father. I wish that for you. I wish that for me. God bless you. And I pray that you will desire in the midst of all the noise, all the sound. Guess what? I want to be part of the glorious church. God's chosen bride, perfected for a perfect king. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's pray. Father, we surrender. Father, we commit ourselves to you. We say, Lord, we are yours. As Paul prayed this prayer, in the statement in Acts, he says, in him we live and move and have our being. Apart from him, we don't live. Apart from him, we have no momentum. And apart from him, we have no being. Because he is the only being. We are just a becoming. So in him we live and move and have our being. So Lord, take us deeper in you. Take us higher in you. Take us further in you. So that we can live for you. And Lord, be a blessing to everyone around us. That we can touch as many people as possible. Make us selfless. 